I am going to be joined on stage for a panel discussion by some women who are really at the cutting edge in their respective fields. I'm going to call them up one by one and introduce them a little bit, and then we will get down to business. So without further ado, please welcome Lisa Witter. She's the founder and executive chair of Apolitical. Grab a chair. It's a network that connects. Yeah. Have a seat. <laughs> Connects public servants with inspiring ideas. All right. I'm, all right. She's going to tell us more. Our next speaker is a Senegalese-born British businesswoman and the founder of I Am Code. That's the first African-led global movement that mobilizes, excuse me, the government, private sector, and investors to advance STEM education. Please give a warm welcome to Marion Jam. Up next, we have the Danish CEO of the period tracking app Clue, which, if you read the news, you know just pulled in 20 million in Series B funding. Please welcome Ida Tin. <laughs> and last but very certainly not least, we have the founder and CEO of Intern Avenue. That's a platform that connects would-be interns with employers at no cost to them. Please welcome Dubsy Abiola. So I want to get a feel for the audience before we dive into our discussion. How many of you are actively working in tech at the moment? Raise your hand. So that's, I would say, what, 25%? How about government? One person? Um, media? Oh, quite a lot of media. Life science? What am I forgetting? Help me out. AI? AI? There we go. <laughs> Great. So let's come back to the issue of women in tech. We kind of know where we stand. Let's get one word from each of our panelists to describe the current state of women in tech. Lisa, why don't you start? Getting better. Getting better. That's two words, but I'll, I'll allow. The marginalized are, uh, are getting, uh, you know, we're teaching them how to code, so the marginalized are getting their voices. Getting their voices. Still too rare. Too rare. Mm. Ida? I think we're starting to hear positive stories that might inspire more people. Positive stories. All right. How about you tell us a little bit about how you got where you are now? Ida, you can. Yeah. Um, so first of all, we are actually a female health tracker, which oh. might be a little different. But um, yeah, how did I get here? Well, I, I had an idea, and I went for it. I think that's really the most important um, kind of grain, is having something that you're really passionate about, and then actually doing something. Um, and then I met a couple of other people who are also very passionate about this, and they happen to be men. I co-founded the company with four men. Imagine that. <laughs> um, and then I got some money from people who could see that there might potentially be something about creating um, a brand for female health. Uh, then we managed to build the first version of the product, also very important, and then maybe most importantly, it turned out that there were some people out there in the world that could get value from the product. And then it went on from there. More money, more team members, more product. Started with a passion. Devsi, how about you? How did you find your feet? So um, I also have a very non-traditional background. Um, I started out as a barrister, um, which is an unusual thing, um, uh, and then uh, quit my job in a blaze of glory um, uh, as I was being offered partnership at my law firm because I felt really passionately that I could be doing more and I felt really that young people needed more help and I, I, I kind of felt that there was a solution out there or I would at least try to find one. Um, so um, I really went out there not knowing um, anything except for that I've always been a technophile. Even though I didn't do um, a, a traditional coding degree, I created my first website myself. Um, and I've always loved technology and the way that it can transform the world. Um, and I have been just in awe of the support that I've received from men and women alike who have just you know, you know, any person who's ever started a business. I don't know if there's anybody thinking about starting a business. Show of hands. Anyone? Oh, there should be more. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who, who, who either thinks about starting a business or does knows that it's one of the most challenging things you can do. And, um, you know, um, it starts with an idea and then it's the support of everybody you have around you. It starts with an idea. Lisa? 
Well, um, I'll start with my birth. No, I've just, <laughs> it, it does start really uh, young for me. The two things I loved as a kid, I, I was a massively competitive athlete. Um, my nickname was Animal. I played volleyball, basketball, softball, soccer. I loved winning. I also went to church every Sunday with my grandmother, and it was there I got a sense of something bigger than myself. And so if you combine um, sort of being part of something bigger than yourself and winning, the obvious career path is politics. And why do you go into politics? You go into politics because you believe in going into government and policy. And so my entire career has been about this operating system of democracy in some way, shape, or form. And I got quite frustrated um, at the fact that entrepreneurs, uh, um, being a just born entrepreneur, weren't looking at this opportunity um, of this $30 trillion market to go in and make more efficient. Make more efficient in terms of improving people's lives. So I came together with another wo woman who had a tech, tech background. She, she had um, sold a, a small AI company. She had a passion for um, scale. Isn't that what we're all about, is wanting to, you're gonna change women's health forever. You're gonna change interns forever. You're gonna get every little girl to code. I think entrepreneurship is about big ambitions and big scale. And we, we just started it. We just believed we could do it. And I, I, I think part of our story is quite interesting in that I went to, women investors, and I said, I don't want to tell the story about how crappy it is to be a women entrepreneur. I don't even want that story. I could tell it, but I don't want it. I want to tell a different story. So we went to a group of women investors. We raised 50% of our angel round from women, 50% um, from men, and our, we're um, doing a convertible note right now. Um, it's led by women, and these women investors have come on board. The men are great too, it's not that. But I wanted to tell a different story about women and money supporting women. That's inspiring. Marianne, tell us how you found your start in coding. Well, I mean, my journey is completely different. Um, so I'm from Senegal, West Africa, and I started uh, a very, you know, a very difficult childhood uh, growing up in Senegal and, and didn't have any education, really. You know, I started reading and writing when I was 16 years old in Paris. So I ended up in Europe really accidentally. Uh, but, you know, fast forward, I am now a tech CEO in the UK. And I think that uh, what Riva said, you know, we don't have any clue what's happening around the world. And I think we're sitting around, uh, you know, in, in very comfortable places in Europe, in Berlin, and we think we have a clue what's happening. And we actually don't have any clue, and I really will take that with me. And I think I, I started really to, uh, to try to figure out what can we do for the marginalized? What can we do for people on the ground in Africa and, and you know, in Asia? And I think that because of my, my background and my childhood and seeing difficulty, but also seeing going on the ground, seeing people doing it, making it, creating things with little things and really being proud of that. And, and I wanted to bring that to, to the West and bring that to the UK, where today, I was just making a joke uh, yesterday, where I live in the southeast of England is, is a 39 billion economy. It's, it's a wide dominant area. I'm the only black woman on the street. And, and those women are digitally illiterate. And so you have a Senegalese woman who never had an education teaching them how to code. <laughs> you see what I mean? So all the journalists are trying to come to me and speak, write a story, but I like Riva, I don't care about the story. I care about the fact that I'm actually teaching women in Guildford how to code. And so I am the code actually started like that, to mobilize government, like Lisa's work is so important in that, and private sector, investors, people we fund to, to invest in I am the code, because when you invest in I am the code, you're investing in thousands of women. And today you'll see that with uh, amazing women we have here in this room. We've been investing in this women for like six, seven years without anybody is fund. Just believing in it, going, hustling, working behind the scenes, believing in that if you invest in one person, she will end up here. Mm. And, and that's, that's how I started. That's inspiring. I'd like to hear something about your role models. Dubsy, you were a barrister, now you're a woman working in tech. Was there a person along the way who made you think, hey, I want to do that? Yeah, I mean, I was um, fantastically um, fortunate to have um, parents who were my, my role models. My father was an entrepreneur um, in Africa, um, and he did phenomenal things coming from nothing to become um, you know, a real force to be reckoned with in Africa. And he also was very passionate about politics and, and went into, pa into politics too, because I think it really does go hand in hand. The kind of people who want to make positive change want to change people's lives for the best in every single sense. So um, I was always surrounded by people who, you know, were bold. And one of the things um, that always 
was emblazed in my mind was fortune favors the bold in every sense. So if you decide that you want to do something, frankly, just having the courage to go out there and do it is, is, is the key thing. And both my mother and my father pro provided an environment where you know, I wasn't afraid, regardless of whether I succeed or not. I wasn't afraid to put myself forward. And I think, you know, when I, when I quit my job and it was very stable and all this other stuff, my friends were like, you're completely mad. Like, they were like, <laughs> you are complete, like, you know, I, they, were, they were supportive, of course, but there was kind of the side eye, like, you know, she's obviously gone completely nuts um, and all the rest of it. But I kept on saying, you know, with the one life that we have, you know, I want to touch as many people as I can. I want to try and do my best. And whether I actually manage to, to help, you know, if I help one person, or at least if I try and help one person, I think that's, that's it. And you find that when you begin doing things, you, you influence thousands and, and you touch thousands of people. And I really hope that people aren't, you know, are motivated by courage and the, the, the kind of joy of trying to do or make the world better, rather than being held back by the fears that they might have. Courage. Can I jump in on this one? Please. This has been, the, you know, you get this question a lot, like, what are your role models? And I've always been stumped. And I'm like, God, should I make something up? Or should I just like, <laughs> and, and I would say, I, the, what's come to my mind th through the years thinking about this is I've never had a role model. I've had peer models, yes. mm. meaning that my mom and dad, you know, I'm an Aubite's kids. They weren't entrepreneurs. Most of the men I knew growing up, except for my father, weren't equal parents. Very few women both had a big career and were moms. I, there weren't really anyone to look up to. Most people were doing it wrong, or if they were doing it right, not wrong, but not the way I wanted, right? And most of the people who, who were, were sacrificing really big because they were pioneers, and with that came a lot. And so I decided I'm not gonna look up, I'm gonna look to the side, and I'm gonna lock arms, and I'm gonna have my peers around me. Like, you are a role model. Like, here's an amazing woman with a story. She's a mom, she gets up every day, she does it. I have men that are role models for me in terms of their home every night they have a startup my husband has a startup he's home every night for dinner so for me don't I don't think it's about going and finding that one person for me it's about bringing my friends together and saying let's support each other through this we're gonna screw up we're gonna make it we're not but let's really look at each other and support each other that's my role model have been my friends yes, I think I think that's a very good sense and I think if you look into role modeling Sometime, for people like us, we don't have mom and dads, and, and we grow up in orphanages and in detention places where, you know, people will never imagine where we grow up. And but you, you ask yourself, how did you end up where we where we end up? It's because, you know, I am motivated by young women growing up in, in in Uganda, for example, or, you know, those young girls growing up in Senegal. I ask myself, you know, what can you do for these people? But also, you know, the, the top people with heart and empathy and kindness. You know, people like Lisa, you know, without Lisa, we wouldn't be here today, me personally, and Brendan, you know, from Uganda, you're gonna meet her in a minute. And so it's so important to, to see the life cycle of, of role modeling, people who are helping you all the time, but people who believe in you. Mm. I think what, what uh, you know, uh, you know, what, um, uh, what, we, what we heard earlier about the, the people not having a clue is that, mm -hmm. When you find people who are kind and, and, and have heart and empathy and, and compassion and, and actually they want to do something for, for, for the world, you'll see them in their own eyes because they don't hold back. They just go and do and they just go and do it. And you find, you know, I remember I was just having a, a hug with Brendan earlier and, and you know our first conversation was in, in Thailand far away for a young Ugandan woman coming from Thailand. And you see this, this empathy and compassion. And I think sometimes we just need to hold each other's hand and say, mm. can you help me? I actually don't have any clue. Yeah, Just support me. <laughs> <laughs> Holding each other's hands and also having empathy and compassion for ourselves. Something that you hear a lot from people who have founded a venture or a startup is, I screwed up. I would love for you to tell us about one time that you've screwed up and you kept going. Anyway, Ida, maybe you would like to start. Oh, I won't. There's pr many, many stories, but um, I just came from a, a meeting with an investor because you are, though we just raised a lot of money, you always kind of, you know, if a good investor in town, you kind of meet him. And so we have been doing um, all these meetings with investors that are Series B stage, obviously, where being thesis driven is kind of a big thing. Uh, and I think a very meaningful thing. So I asked him, so what, you, but I can hear that you don't really sound very thesis driven. This is a later stage investors where obviously they are not very thesis driven because they are driven by 
numbers. They look at who are performing well. So that was just like this obvious moment of like, I said it and I was like, oh no, that's like, that made no sense. And, so, and these moments come all the time. And to the point that we heard earlier about, nobody has a clue. I think one thing is you are doing first times every day, all the time, because it's just new challenges you have every day. It's different having a team of five people or 40 people or whatever, 500 people. So this ability to just jump into the deep end and be like, I'm just gonna give it my best and you know, something's gonna probably screw up. And then you look people into the eyes and be like, actually, that makes no sense, did it? And you move on. Tales of screw ups. Who wants to jump in? I'm just trying to think, I mean. You've uh, never screwed up. No, 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 I mean, I have so many, I can't, I, I can barely pick from one. Um, I mean, it's, it's a daily occurrence, really. I think the one, um, so it, the, the reason why I'm having difficulty finding one is because there's just so many, so, 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 so many. Um, and, you know, um, I sit and I think one of the things that is really important is to have people around you to laugh with. So, you know, when you make a screw up, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a learning lesson. Mm. And, and, and the bigger the screw up, the better the lesson. You're like, ooh, that really smarted. <laughs> but more than anything, you have the people around you. So, um, uh, you know, my chairman on my board, who, you know, we talk a lot about women and, and um, women supporting one another, which I think is so important, and not all women do, it's true. But also men supporting us too. Um, and I have some great people who support me. And, you know, sometimes on, on the most difficult days, you know, I've always, I've had a lot of adversity in my life and I've always found that laughter um, uh, in, 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 in those moments can really help you, you know, insulate you for what's to come next. So, I mean, everything from, you know, I don't know, mistakes, mistakes with accountants to, you know, oops, like that head of sales is terrible. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, all and everything in between. But what I will say for every mistake I've ever made, um, I, it has been the beginning of something so much better. Mm. So, you know, when I look, I, I was looking back on um, the first deck that I ever made, which I sent to my friend who was in Silicon Valley and she literally like ripped it to shreds. Um, and I'd sent it to two investors at the time and she was like, you haven't sent this to anyone, have you? I was like, um, no, no. And she's like, she's like, cause, oh, she's like, thank God, cause it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I was like, oh, okay, wow. <laughs> so, and like, you know, when I look at um, that first deck and there have been so many iterations since then. Um, you know, I've raised quite a lot of money now. Um, we're still angel funded. But, um, you know, you can't get to the to where I am without having started with that kind of, you know, <laughs> ble like, you know, she laughed quite hysterically for, I think, five minutes. And I was like, mm, mm, good, 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 good. <laughs> so, yeah. I have a, I have a mistake um, that I try not to make over and over again. I think maybe why there's pausing is I think the, the spirit of at least the women that I know of you up here is that if you made a mistake, you all, always see the silver lining and the mm. screw up. So it's hard to twist it. But the one thing I've learned in the last couple of years is um, I'm, I tend to be a nice person. I try to be nice. And when you're raising money or when you're dealing with arrogant people, which you do all the time in investment space, they kind of treat you like crap a lot. And I don't know if they mean to, but they'll say just things about your business. Like one, one person said to us, someone who likes us said, what are two girls like you going to be able to teach the World Bank? And I was like, I was, I was just kind of shocked by it. So I was just really nice and I kept drinking my tea and then I left and I called my co-founder like steaming mad. And the mistake was I need to call people on that crap because whenever I do call people on it, guess what? They respect me more. They really do. And I really wish the times when people would pat me on the head that I wouldn't, I wouldn't respond with only anger, but just sort of be like, actually, that's wrong. And I'm very happy to report that we're in the middle of a deal with the World Bank right now. <laughs> it feels so good, right? It feels so good that that's what we did. So I would say... One of the things, I was really honored to work with many of the women in the F lane, and one of the things about charisma, some of the research around charisma, because I'm a political junkie, is this um, balance you have in yourself between strength and warmth. And I'm always trying to put that dial up and down. And there's been times where I've been too dialed, too warm, and I should have stood up for myself. I, I always do in some way, but in the moment, I should have pushed back more, because every time I have, people have respected me more.
I want to, oh, we just got the five minute sign here. I want to give a chance to our audience to jump in. If you have a question for someone on the stage, a comment, a thought you'd like to share, I'd like to invite you to jump in. This is your discussion, it's your event. So if you have something to say, don't be shy. Raise your hand, we'll get you a microphone. Is that, is that a hand, Roycey, over there? Are you raising your hand? Can we get her a microphone over here on the left? Hello, my name is Danielle Kaiser and I'm the founder of the Menstrual Health Hub. And I wanted to ask you all about the current political climate and how that has either uh, depressed or fueled your fire and how you've kind of been able to grapple and move forward with um, how things are going, the assault on women's rights and women's health and um, like the little um, meditations you've told yourself to, to push further. I mean, for us, we're just moving forward. We're not stopping. You know, we don't have any, we don't have an infantile conversation with all those Donald Trump, for example. <laughs> we're not interested in that. You know, our women and girls are coding across Africa. Businesses are being, are investing in the continent. And we're just focusing on the positive side. And I think that there's no need to waste time in people who are negative. And, and or there will be always women issues around the world. And it's getting worse, of course, in the UK where I live and the US. But I think we have a very focused, uh, you know, vision. Uh, you know, we want to empower one million women and girls by 2030. That's our mission. That's what we're going to do. We have the data, the coders, you know, across Africa, and we're just going to move forward. So, and then they will see at the end of the day how we're doing. I would say, you know, I'm, my, my business is exactly in this space. We're like TripAdvisor for policy meets LinkedIn for government. And um, fundamentally, we help spread faster, accelerate faster what's working in government around the world. And I'll tell you, one of the narratives that is really broken almost everywhere is that government is broken. And there are great things happening and there are great people like the minister that we see every day who aren't the rock stars. I mean, let's face it, people in government aren't the rock stars of our time. It's, it's the entrepreneurs. Maybe the balance is off a bit, in, in my opinion. So for our business, it's been mostly quite good because we find that people have a hunger to, to invest in this operating system that we call democracy and that we call government. And the absence of that is absolute chaos. Um, we, we put out a weekly briefing, we, do our, we have our own media and media partnerships, and we talk about what's working in government around the world. And just very practically, um, it, it's great. It's like free marketing for our company and it's good because it helps spread what's working. And we're getting spikes in subscription, which is great for our business because we're documenting what's going on. On the downside, we raise a lot of money from the United States and um, I, I don't need to tell you what's going on there, and a different administration would have been much more open to this globalist sharing point of view. And as governments close down their borders, in the short term, they don't want to share, but in the long term, they have to, because frankly, every single person I've talked to in ministries, in prime minister's offices, in finance, everywhere, they're trying to figure out, just for example, this women's entrepreneurship thing. And people can't afford to recreate the wheel. Change is happening too quickly. Governments don't know how to deal with AI. They, 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 they still think it's artificial insemination in a lot of places. <laughs> I mean, these problems are the same everywhere. Migration, integration, refugees. And so the spread of what's working, it's, it's helping us, frankly. The only thing I would add to that is um, typically the day, um, you, know, you know, just before dawn of a new thing, things can look pretty dark. So I think one thing that is a positive from, you know, some of these developments, which are unsettling for sure, is that I think it has brought a discussion forward and it has allowed people to actually identify who you know, who is thinking what? Because, you know, there's, there's clearly been a hidden element <laughs> all along. And I think you can't deal with something unless it's been brought to light. So I think, you know, when you see the most amazing movements over history, they come just before, you know, times like these. So, you know, I'm, I, you know, I know it's troubling, but I think, you know, th the morning will be brighter. I want to add one thing. So. When you look at the world, the most outrageous people claim a space in the world and take a lot of speaking time and have a very, very loud voice. We need to also go out and have a voice. And that's on every one of us to take the responsibility to have that voice and use it. And that's whether it's for you to go vote or it's to start a business or do great work in politics, whatever it is, you have to use your voice because other people are using theirs and you might not like what you hear. 
Use your voice. I can't think of a better note to end on. Ida, Dubsy, Mariam, and Lisa, thank you so much for being on the stage today.